Hey everyone, this is George Soto and you're watching Startups Unedited. And this is George Soto and you're watching Startups Unedited. I'm here with my really, really good friend. I mean, Mal, you've been basically a, a brother to me uh, since we used to live together, or, or work together rather, not live together. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> let's make sure your we wife doesn't back. misunderstand, right? <laughs> Exactly. You go way back all the way to New York, man. Absolutely. Back in the days in New York, you know, you actually, speaking of New York, you've worked at some of the hottest companies in media, you know, starting off at, were you at Disney? Yeah, I was at Disney. I uh, worked for um, ABC News at the time for Walt Disney Internet Group. So I worked for ABC and ABC News um, in their, I guess you could say their digital media outfit. Awesome. Well, I know, so we met, and this was, uh, I think, in 2008 at a startup called uh, Kick Apps, which at the time was trying to really right. build the platform or the media platform of the future, which was really built on top of social networking. And for folks out there who uh, are not familiar with the company, we basically had an online community, white labeled online community out of the box. So if you think about Ning, I don't know if you remember what Ning was trying to do back in the day, um, but what the, this, the, I think the big distinction, in my opinion, uh, Mal, was um, was really kind of the, um, the, the, the Ning ID, right? So like Ning, you needed to use their authentication layer. Uh, with us, exactly. we had single sign-on. What was your take on, you know, kind of what Kick Apps was trying to build at that time, and the way that you saw new media or media in general start to evolve? So it's it's interesting because when it, when the whole social media uh, started, it was all about creating your own social network destination site on your terms, on your own digital real estate. So you might have a company like MBA or NHL saying, look, we have a lot of fans. We have people who really like our brand. Why don't we create a ecosystem for them where they can share content, whether it was video, audio, um, forum content, commenting, messaging. Let's share that amongst each other, being that we're all fans of the same thing. Now, the problem is what we were doing then is creating a walled garden around those fans, but then those fans couldn't communicate with other fans that were outside of the NBA or into other sports. And that's where you have things like Facebook, where they're saying, well, you can still be a fan of these brands. You can still participate and conversate with these brands that you love. But guess what? We'll create a, a bigger walled garden where you can connect with your friends, your family, your brands, your influencers, all in one place. And when you look at that value proposition, it's very, very difficult to compete with what I would call the super world garden, uh, where we, we might have had um, uh, a couple of uh, flowers here and there, and they're saying, look, we're going to build a big, gigantic uh, ecosystem. We'll build you a whole entire forest where you can participate and connect with whomever you want. Yeah. Um, so the kind of bolt on social network, I think in the beginning, um, eventually we evolved away from that. And then, then you have things like, um, you know, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, you know, creating a bigger ecosystem um, outside of just a bolt on uh, network to a domain. Well, I remember specifically and I remember the time within the company and then in the macro environment where, you know, Facebook had opened up the API, remember? And they opened up Facebook Connect. Absolutely. You remember that? And we were like, oh, my God. We're, I, I was just like, how are we going to compete with this thing, right? <laughs> how are we going to compete with that scale? Yeah. And um, they were also creating, you know, at the time, you know, the, the, you know, the, the like button. And they were creating commenting widgets. They were actually exporting their ecosystem outside of Facebook, yeah. which made Facebook even more compelling. And essentially, Facebook is saying, look, uh, they even started with Beacon. You remember before they got into a lot of trouble when they yeah, started with, the with Facebook Beacon. Yeah, Beacon targeting stuff, yeah. And, and, and now uh, there is a um, 
what I would call a lower barrier to entry for social networks having a little bit of inside information about who you are. Because I think at the end of the day, people are saying, look, I realize that they have a profile on me, but if you could get me good information and connect me to the right people and the right sources and the right information and the right pages, I think at the end of the day, people are all for it. Um, however, uh, Facebook is basically creating a way to distribute the whole entire platform without you being having to be inside. In. So yeah. Once, totally. once you're once you're authenticated, then now you have access to everything, whether it's uh, SSO liking or commenting or using some of their you know um, distributed widgets. And I had a very similar conversation with one of the business owners uh, that I was talking to. And I said, look, you have to, if you want to succeed, you have to go where the people are. Expecting them to come to your destination site, that you're creating a huge barrier uh, to entry. Um, go where they are, go where they're communicating. It's yeah. no different than what's happening with Snapchat. You got to go where they are rather than saying, hey, come to my domain. Yeah. I think that that approach is, I think, like as I said, the home page is dead. Yeah. And it's happening. No, it's true. It's it's absolutely true. I know you now are at Al Jazeera in Qatar. You, you're one of the That's leaders right. of their new media organization. Um, you know, you just mentioned Snapchat, but before we get into Snapchat, you know, what are you guys up to in terms of, you know, new media and, and innovation? You know, I, I can certainly tell you what I've seen, and I've seen you really, really being able to, to, to move the needle uh, around leveraging social media to distribute content with it, like AG plus or, or AJ plus rather, that's, and all the other right. new media. Right. So what was the thought process there? Uh, when when you started to develop this plan to say, hey, we're going to be the most innovative media organization on planet Earth, because I know that's the I know that's part of the mission, right? Yeah, part of, yeah, exactly. So so part of the mission is to um, really tell a a story, um, as we say, being the voice of the voiceless, telling a great story and distributing it everywhere. And one of the the you know the strategies is to is to remove, um, or re remove the whole entire walled garden. So, things like uh, you know Google Amp, uh, in, uh, Facebook Instant Articles, push our content in spaces where people can consume it as fast as possible. Yeah. And in addition to that, I think what's also important is that there is a degree of personalization um, because. Uh, you know, Al Jazeera covers a lot of content. We have a lot of different content types. We a lot of short, long form content. Our content is very varied. So you have to start segmenting your content uh, based on user personas. And to be honest, that user persona can transform throughout the day. You might have someone at 8 a.m. ready to consume maybe, you know, a 300 word story or maybe a two minute piece of conversation. But then at lunchtime, when they have a little bit of downtime, then they're into long form content. And then when they go home, then they might even be into longer form content. So you really have to chop up and segment one individual by behavior because they're not the same person that they are in the morning, that they are in the afternoon, that they are at night. And when you start calculating how many different permutations and how much segmentation you have, you really need to build a smart algorithm to start augmenting your content based on how the user wants to consume what I call moments. Uh, people go into moments. So if you notice, if you look at YouTube, the YouTube uh, recommendation engine changes by the minute. It, it, it looks at what you're clicking on at that moment and then starts to sprinkle in those types of topics and that type of content in your list because it's saying, you know what? This person is going on a content marathon on this particular topic. Let's say you're clicking on the WWE videos and it's saying, look, at this moment, user A is into this, let's give them more. And when they see you opt out of that moment, then they put you in another moment. So what's really happening, and I think this kind of speaks to the, the, 
the kind of uh, what I call the Snapchat generation is people are into moments. They're yeah. minute by minute. They change their behavior based on what's happening at the time. So ability for you to capture uh, that moment and surface some really interesting and related content, I believe is where you're going to win. It can't be a gunshot blast approach. You have to go in with a scalpel. You have to go in with a microscope when you're crafting content for your audience. Awesome. And I said, essentially that is, the, the, that is, I think why AJ plus was so successful because they really got good at the nichification of content. That's amazing. So really providing relevant personalized content to the, uh, to the audience member at the right time. And so that being, you know, sort of, a, um, a, you know, the difference between a short form video clip or long form or topics even, I mean, there's a variety of things there, you know, let's talk I mean, real, real quick about Snapchat because I mean, I'm doing the Snapchat stuff. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm not sure, sure rather how that's even connecting to my broader channels. It's just kind of like I got to do it. So it's not linking back to anything else. Um, you know, you know, one thing that I was thinking that they could do very easily is be able to generate deep link URLs into like at least mm -hmm. Twitter or something else. You know, what, what's your take on Snapchat? What, how are you guys at Al Jazeera thinking about Snapchat today? So there's a bit of experimentation with Snapchat. I, I, I think at the end of the day, regardless of what uh, social media vehicle you're using, you have to have great content. Yeah. And once you can chop up that content and segment that content and then push that content to the right audience, I think that is, that is where the winning strategy is. Um, there, there's really no way that you can fake content. Yeah. It has to be valuable. Totally. <laughs> it has to be relevant. And all the marketing and packaging and design won't get you anywhere if you're really not telling a compelling story. Well, Mal, I, and, I, I, um, I can just tell you real quick, we're not faking this at all. I mean, I just gave you a call, <laughs> right? I'm, get, I'm in Miami getting eaten up by just these really terrible flies or mosquitoes rather <laughs> anyways so yeah content is very difficult to uh to, to fake here uh, anyways back to what you were saying about experimentation with snapchat absolutely and i think that there is a certain degree of um honesty that people expect when you push content out there people are very sophisticated they know when something is real when it's not mm -hmm. um so I, I, I think having that degree of honesty and object, objectivity, and even to a certain degree, showing a bit of vulnerability is, is, is actually um, of value when you're pushing content out there. Because I think people want real, honest, straightforward information. And at the same time, it still needs to be exciting. No yeah. one's asking for, you know, to, to, do, to listen to something that is useful and boring you still have to package the content. Yeah. And um, it's just that I don't think that you need to sacrifice integrity mm. uh, uh, because you're marketing and pack packaging and making something look really delicious. Totally. Uh, you, 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 you can make those two worlds work together. Yeah. And, um, and, and that's really what we're trying to do with a lot of our digital products is to really find out who is the primary audience What's the job that we're trying to do? What's the type of content that we really want to push? If you have your core market, do you want to make that experience better? And if you're acquiring new markets, new audiences, what do we need to do? How do we need to package that content? What, what is the actual content strategy um, that we need to... In, um, and, it's a, and, it's a, and keep in mind that content strategy is, is a very uh, fluid... Um, sheet it's not uh, something that's uh, carved in concrete you actually have to augment and revisit the premise behind your content strategy every day I yeah. mean, when you're sitting with your data uh, analysts they're going to be giving you a content feedback loop to make it easier 
and to make it better for you to distribute your content to the right audience. Yeah. Cool. Well, Malik Oxford, my brother, I really love you. I miss you, man. We gotta we gotta catch up Same in here, person man. at some point. I, I'm gonna try to get out to Qatar. Why don't we try to do a, another interview uh, in a couple weeks or something on the Qatar startup scene or just e even just the startup ecosystem in that Absolutely. area? That would be great. Maybe we can get a couple entrepreneurs <laughs> from the community. Definitely, this, I, I will definitely talk to some people. There's a, there's a lot of things cooking here. Um, they're, they're really trying to, to innovate. It's a, it's an uphill battle, but I think there is a lot of opportunity in Qatar. I think there's just, you know, it's just time getting the right people, getting the right business people and the right people who are really passionate about building a, you know, a proper uh, platform here in the region. Cool. And if people want to follow you on Twitter, I know you have a blog. What's your Twitter handle? So my Twitter handle is no Joneses, okay? And my website, as you know why I hate the Joneses, uh, <laughs> you could just use the short domain, uh, no Joneses, uh, dot com will take you to why I hate the Joneses. Awesome. Hey, have a great day, Mal. It's great to uh, connect with you. Let's try to catch up offline and uh, hear all the great stuff that, that's going on with the family too. Yeah, man, it was, as usual, fantastic uh, talking with you, and we will definitely catch up soon. Thanks so much, man. All right, brother. Take care.